We're starting a new chapter, and this whole chapter is about matrices and systems. Uh, so with this, you can solve systems of equations using matrices, and I'm going to show you a couple different ways within this unit, you know, how you can do that. Um, to start off with, we're going to talk about probably one of the more challenging ways to solve a system with matrices, but actually, personally, I think it's one of the best ways because um, you can do this with without the without the variables, and you can do it um, without having to use substitution. But today, I am going to show you the substitution. Uh, this is also called with substitution. Um, it is also called the Gaussian elimination. Um, Really, it is substitution slash elimination, so it's a combination of deals here. And the reason why it's called Gaussian is because uh, that's the name of the mathematician that came up with this. Um, so let's say, for instance, that I have 1x plus 2y minus 3z equals negative 28. And I've got 3x minus 1y plus 2z. That equals 3. And last but not least, negative 1x plus 1y minus 1z equals negative 5. So with this, it's kind of tricky to just look at this and just say, oh, x is 1, y is 2, and z is 3. So you want it so you have a solution in which an x, y, and z can all be plugged into, it doesn't matter which equation, and they all equal what they should. Um, so how we're going to do this is we're just going to work with um, the triangulation form, and that's getting it down so you can solve for a variable. So what do I mean with that? What I mean with that is this is really substitution and elimination tied together. So my goal here is to get things reduced. So I'm going to start off with, we're going to leave this side of the board for the proper triangular form. Um, so the first one, you need an equation in which it's an x, y, and z. And when you do this, you want the first variable to be always a 1. Uh, so I'm just going to go ahead and leave that first one there. So then my next line would be a 1. Generally, you want it to be a 1y, but it doesn't necessarily have to be a y. But it's just going to be a y and a z. And then the last one is just going to be a z. So it forms a triangle. Okay. So that's the reason why it's called a triangular form. So how am I going to get this so I can have just a y and a z? I can get this having just a y and a z by using elimination in order to get it so it's down to just a y and a z. So for instance, if I look at equation 1 and equation 3, notice that the x is it's a 1x and a negative 1x. So if I were to combine those, aka add them, I would get rid of that x, and then I'd be down with a y and a z. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. I'm just going to leave this here so we know it's our original. So I've got 1x plus 2y minus 3z equals negative 28. And then I've got negative 1x plus 1y minus 1z equals negative 5. We're adding these. Now, Here's what a lot of people struggle with. They struggle with um, the signs that are in front of the variable, and they just see a plus, and so they add. So a lot of people would take, um, in this case, this one works out, but 0x, and they go 2 plus 1y, okay, 3y. And then here's where they would forget this. They would go negative 3 minus 1. Well, it, that might work but it might not. If this were to be a negative over here, you'd really be adding one. So that's why I'm telling you, you have to be cautious. So negative 3 uh, minus 1 is negative 4z. 
And then I've got negative 28 plus negative 5, which gives me a negative 33. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and write that equation in. I've got it. I can put it in my triangular form. So I've got 3y minus 4z, and that equals negative 33. All right, that's great. Now I need an equation that's just a z. So this is where it gets a little bit trickier. When you need just a z, most likely you aren't going to eliminate the y's and the x at the same time. So what you have to do is you have to do what I like to call a double elimination from the beginning. So for instance, I'm going to use that 3x and then that first equation so I can get a y and a z equation by itself. Okay, so I'm going to obviously have to multiply the top equation by 3, which is then going to give me, and I'm going to do it with a negative 3 just so I'm mad. So I have negative 3x minus 6y plus 9y equals a positive 84. I know it's getting large, but it works. The second equation we know is just going to be the same as what we see. I'm going to go ahead and add these. I get that 0x minus 7y plus 11z equals 87. So now, now I can get that z by itself. And I'm going to do that by combining this equation and this equation together. Um, I will have to do some multiplication in order to eliminate those y's. I'm obviously going to multiply this one by 7, and this one's going to get multiplied by 3. Um, so that's going to give me negative 21y plus 33z equals 261. By the way, if you don't want to use, uh, if you can keep track of what variable you're working with, you don't necessarily have to add the variables in all the time. You just do it with numbers. Um, 21y minus 28z equals negative 231. So then from this, I get a 5z equals 30, which now I can use my triangulation and add that in. Okay, so now that I have this, how is this going to help me? This is going to help you because these are the three equations you're going to use in order to solve for your variables. So looking at this, obviously z is going to be um, 6. We already know that. Got a lot going on, I know. So now I'm going to take that and I'm going to plug it in here to solve for y. So I've got 3y. I don't know why I wrote down 60, sorry. Now I've got 3y minus 4 times 6 equals negative 33. I do the algebra behind that. y equals negative 3. Now I'm going to take those two and plug them in to the y and the z to get my x. So then I'd have 1x plus 2 times negative 3 minus 3 times 6 equals negative 28 and x equals negative 4. That right there is my final answer. So if I were to take all of those numbers and plug those in to each one of those equations, I would get a correct answer. Um, we will do more of this in class, so don't worry. I still do have a little bit more to go through with you. Um, so that we didn't use matrices at all, but we're leading into matrices for the second part. Um, before we get to the second part, I do want to give you just kind of a heads up of what some stuff is before we get there. So the first thing is an augmented matrix. So we had, from that last one, we had a 1x plus 2y minus 3z equals negative 28, 3x minus 1y plus 2z equals 3. Then we had a negative at 1x plus 1y minus 1z equals negative 5. So an augmented matrix is taking your system there and forming it into a matrix. And it's really not bad at all. 
you just list out your numbers. So 1, 2, negative 3, and I like to draw a split just so I know that's where my equals is. Um, even though the far right, far right column is always going to be what it equals, but I just like to show it that way I know for sure. And you'll understand why uh, in the second part. So 3, negative 1, 2, 3, negative 1, 1, negative 1, and negative 5. This right here is our augmented matrix. Okay, so this is what our goal is. When you're working with this, our goal is then to switch this into proper, uh, proper identity is technically what it's called, but it's row echelon form. Um, row echelon form Uh, row echelon form is going to be where you have, so this one's a little bit different, but you have diagonals of a one leading up to that dotted line. So your diagonal must start at the corner and work its way down. And it, the ones there have to go to the dotted line and underneath, this part here has to be zeros. Um, this is just row echelon form. The next part of this video, we're going to talk about reduced row echelon form.